this is an updated video on using Google Meet with children in schools. There are three ways of using Google Meet. Firstly, you can do so via calendar. And if you look online, you'll find information about creating a Google Meet using calendar. And this can be used between adults very easily. So for example, you can add an occasion to your calendar give it a title. You can add people like Albert Pupil or you can add a group which will invite a whole group and that gives a meet code and I can then save that and I won't send an invitation as pupils don't have email addresses. Now that phonics meeting is put into Google as a calendar invite. If I change view to Albert's view he will have that invitation and he will be able to join the meet and we'll just turn all these off to save some bandwidth but basically he's instantly able to join that meet and if his friends were on there as well they'd all be able to join as well. And you can see that the pupils can hang out and use this to chat whenever they like. So despite this being a valid way of creating a meet, in schools never use this with children, but it's a great way of setting up meetings for adults, particularly if they use the calendar function because it prompts them you should be doing something now. So if your staff are used to using the calendar function, great feature for setting up and arranging meetings. If you arrange the meeting, and I add Google Meet but don't invite the guests and instead save that link and send it to other people. The children are still able to get in to the meeting without the adult being here so I am on as Albert the pupil and he's able to access that meeting without any teacher being there. Currently don't use calendar to access Google Meet with children. It's not a safe way of accessing Meet. So there are two safe ways of using Meet with children using Google for Education. Number one route is to use Meet that is built into their classroom. It is a standard part of every single Google Classroom. It's accessed and controlled by this little widget on the teacher's stream or through the settings cog of each classroom where you've got a whole section about Meet. And if you've never used Meet, you can turn it on for the first time from here. You can reset and change codes if this has been shared with pupils you don't want to have access to this particular Meet. Um, and you can also remove the feature altogether. We can also toggle whether or not the actual login button appears for students on their screen. So as teacher, it's here to remind me as students, it's toggled off at the moment, and so therefore Albert the pupil cannot see the button at the moment. So as a teacher, what I would do is I may announce using the Google Classroom, something like this, and post it to the classroom. And you'll notice when I did post things, you can actually choose to only post these messages to certain specific students should you wish. And then what I would do is I would make sure my meet link was set up. So through the three dots I can manage it or through the cog I can manage it and I can make it visible to students and hit done. So what this does is it enables this very special version of meet which is more secure than the standard one access through calendar. And it's secure for these reasons. So if we now see what the page now looks like as Albert, our pupil, there we are, the, the page has just refreshed itself automatically. And here we have a join button. Maths group meet 9.45 today. So Albert gets there, Albert's a bit early. He thinks, oh, well, I'll join anyway. I can chat to my friends. So Albert will just turn off those to save some bandwidth for now. And we go join now. And basically, Albert's now held 
in a waiting room, which is very different from the way it was approached using the Google Calendar version of Meet. So waiting for host to join, the meeting will start as soon as the host has joined. That's a brand new um, feature that's just come to Meet. So the teacher comes up to the right sort of time, thinks, OK, I better start now the, the Meet. They click join. They'd obviously have their uh, microphone and their uh, the camera on, but again, I'm trying to save bandwidth on this machine. We've got visual effects, so I can have different backgrounds. I can choose. Um, I tend to use the blurry background because it blurs out my background. But there are various options, and these options are also available to your students. So you will see them appearing with a firework background and various other exciting things. Um, but you know that that's and 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 maybe in black and white or or whatever. Um, because everyone has access to these effects basically um, before I join I can also check my audio and video uh, have I got the correct input set up and output set up so I better hear people as well so that's all here before I before I come in um, and when I'm ready I can just go right let's join now and let's open the class up and I've joined the class um, and immediately Albert's been let in I can see he's there and now from Albert's point of view He's no longer waiting, he's into the meeting. And if Albert were to uh, uh, start talking, we'll get a terrible echo because uh, it's, it's, I'm in the same room. It, it is me being Albert today, um, but there we are. I get this horrible echo. Um, but the teacher has the ability to control pupils. You can see Albert is muted, but I'd better mute Albert if he wasn't. And of course, others can then join this meeting. Anyone else who's a member of the class can join the meeting. So you can see I've got my small class now of students all in here and they're all being very well behaved and they're muted and obviously I would hope they'd have their cameras on but <laughs> multiple views of me because um, I'm having to be all of these pupils for this demonstration uh, would be a bit boring so we won't bother with that at the moment. So you know, this is how it would look, a tiled view basically. And from here I've got the ability to mute them all. I can pin them all um, to give them a focus if I wish and I'll pin them again. Um, and I've got various other things I can do. So obviously I'm muted currently. I can unmute myself and start talking to the group. I can turn on my camera. Um, we have a feature to raise hand, which is quite useful. So if somebody raises their hand, it flags up to me that there's someone with their hand raised. It flags up if I've got the thumbnail, but of course once I've got 30 children on the screen, it gets a little bit harder to see what's going on. Um, I can also, what it says is open queue, and this opens the people pane, uh, the one here with the, the little heads, and basically people with raised hands jump to the top. So if I've got a long list of 30, 40 people, more than that even if I wish, in my Google Classroom, if they put their hands up, they appear at the top, and then I can talk to them and we can resolve their issue, and I have the ability to lower their hand as well. So from this people pane, I've also got the ability to mute all. So if we come in and it's just too noisy, I hit this button and I mute all. I can also add people manually. I can invite them from the school or just type in any email address and bring them in remotely as well. I've also got access to my host controls. So I can disable their screen sharing for now so they can't screen share. I can disable their ability to chat if I want them to focus on what we're doing in the classroom at the moment. But of course, when I want them to then participate in the lesson, one great participation tool is to be able to switch the chat back on. I can stop them unmuting if we're having persistent problems with pupils um, muting and unmuting themselves. Um, and I can also stop them turning on their video. And then I've got access to the rest of my host settings, which are all available in the three dots at the bottom here. So there's a whole host of other things that I've got access for, including quick access. Uh, when quick access is turned off, the host must join first and only people invited can join without asking, only host can dial out the meeting. So that's what we had, we had it turned off by default and that's the new feature of all the Google Classroom meets, is quick access is turned off and it means that pupils have to wait to come in. Um, only people invited by the host, in this case means only those who are meant to be in my Google Classroom, who are members of my Google Classroom. That's automatically arranged. So if you're part of my Google Classroom, you can get into this Meet automatically. As soon as I open the Meet, you're allowed in. Um, others can, 
um, but um, they'll appear and they'll request permission and I can deny if I wish. And only hosts can dial out. We're not worrying about dialing out particularly because that's something that not many people are going to be using. But basically it's uh, joining externals. So again, and from here I could get access to my video and audio settings as we looked at before if I was still having problems rather than having to leave the meet and rejoin the meet. I've got that ability to do that from within here in the settings. So from here, I, as I say, I can mute, I can pin. Um, with these pupils, I've got some more actions. So I can also kick them out of the meeting and I can add them as a co-host. So if, for example, my teaching assistant were to join us here, um, they wouldn't necessarily get flagged up as a co-host. Giving them the ability to co-host means they'll be able to mute people and they'll be able to, uh, to help manage you know, lower hands and things like that so can be very useful if you have more than one adult in the room to add a co-host now so again this is a new feature so if for example Delia shouldn't be here then I can go to there and I can remove Delia from the meeting um, if removed this person will not be able to join this meeting again so basically they're not going to have the ability to come back in so using this in my Google Classroom um, is pretty sort of final as far as them coming and going back in here is concerned and then if I wish to you know if there's something they're really being silly about then I could fill in a report abuse form which which goes directly to Google um, so this sort of people management pane is very useful for that um, so the raising hand feature is very good as teacher or as any of the students if it's enabled in the host control can share so they can share an entire screen a window or a tab currently if you wish to share any audio so for example audio in a video or animation the only way to do that is via a google tab so it needs to be an online video and then the audio will push out to all your students otherwise they're just going to see the images of your video without any sound so you can share an entire screen if for example you wanted to share something like a pre-prepared smart notebook or ProWise screen you can share an entire window um, and tabs is what works best for us to say for video and audio and lets you share any Google tab that you may have pre-prepared. So, for example, a nice uh, Google slide show um, or a Jamboard screen if you wish to share one of those as a sort of quick view. So that's a way of presenting. Um, and at the moment, if you remember from host controls, I've turned that feature off for students. So if we look at Albert's view, that button is greyed out um, and it uh, just says you're not allowed to share your screen at the moment. And obviously, if I think suddenly now, OK, right, Albert, can you share me what's going on? Uh, you, maybe your, your lovely poem you've written recently um, that you've got on your computer. Then I can enable share screen. And then Albert has now the ability to present as well. And that's exactly the same options as Albert uh, has as I had. Um, and the chat again can be used uh, for, for feedback and for asking questions and within the chat window we can toggle that on and off as well so it's a good reminder if you have switched it off you get to chat and you go oh hang on yeah let everyone send messages you need sending on um, with that switched off you know um, as it says messages can, can be seen only by people in the call and will delete it when the call ends so there's no sort of message history um, but I can uh, enable messages uh, and use them with the students as a member of staff I can still announce something into chat and if we look at that view as Albert Albert has a pop-up that appears and a little indicator here that it suggests that there's something in chat and and Albert can open the chat but he can't reply but if I wanted to share something like maybe a web link this is perfectly possible so, for example, I can paste a web link, I can send the web link, and if I now look at that as Albert the Pupil, Albert the Pupil gets the web link in chat, Albert can click on the web link and access the web link, and we can stay in chat talking about it whilst we look at this web search. If we've managed to turn on the chat, then yes, we can have a uh, dialogue. I can ask a question and I can get pupils to type in their replies um, and it will come up with their name, as it says here. This just says me, you here. Uh, that's got my name, Nick Speller, on it on here. Uh, and as Albert types back, it would say um, Albert. So let me just turn this back on and we'll do uh, Albert can now reply. You see, it's instantaneous. And because I'm on Albert's screen, it says you. But of course, if I look at that as teacher, Albert Pupil says Albert can now reply.
So the chat can be a great feature for, for getting quick feedback, quick answers to quick questions you've asked during the session. So I've then got more options. So I can cast this meeting up onto Chrome uh, and onto many modern boards in a classroom. So we can have this, you know, if I'm working in a mixed environment where I've got some people in class and some people uh, working from home, I can cast this up onto my board um, or onto yeah, an, another, another Chrome device, for example. I, I can open a whiteboard here, which is a Jamboard. Um, I've got a premium feature of recording meetings. This is no longer going to be available um, without paying for the premium features. I've got change layout, so it's defaulted to, well, it was on auto and it's defaulted to tiled, but I can go to spotlight or sidebar, which basically highlights the person who's talking and puts the others down the side. Um, and I've got the ability to have, you know, less or many tiles in the tiled version. So this is set up to have maximum number of tiles, which I think is around 40. So I could get a whole class in there, but it gets very small and very hard to see. So, oh yeah, 49. So I can bring it down, so I can bring it down to, you know, only nine or or six, uh, if I want to really be able to focus in. And the rest just are still here as people, um, but it will just show you the active ones, the people who are speaking and participating up on the screen. So I've got some little settings, more settings I can change in there with screen layout. I can push my screen to full screen. As I'm recording, I'm not going to do that, but basically that would then mean that me, is the highlight here. Um, I can get back to my visual effects if I suddenly decide, well, I should have blurred my background. I've forgotten to do that. I can get back into visual effects to do that. Um, I've got this item called closed captions, and closed captions are currently off. If I turn closed captions on, um, and I'll go for English closed captions and apply. Again, choosing the language is a new feature. It highlights the ones that are currently supported with closed captions. Um, and this will do nothing immediately. Um, however, if I get a student to now start talking, now this is Charlie Pupil talking. And as you can see, as Charlie talks, because this audio is being picked up by the microphone on Charlie's computer, it is being turned into closed captions for other readers who've turned on the closed caption option. And as you can see, it's fairly accurate. It's all being created on the fly by Google as I talk. So we just stopped Charlie talking there and as you can see the closed caption works really well but it's a per user feature so for those students who are going to struggle maybe hearing because of the environment they're in in their, in their own homes if they're at home or for those students who uh, have problems hearing anyway this closed caption is a great feature because you know for those students who may rely a bit on lip reading it's very hard to see lips on the smaller screens like this therefore closed captions is a great feature so that can be turned on and off um, via the settings for all users any of the users can enable that it's not something you can force as a teacher it's a per user option um, and then we've got a few other features. Use phone for audio, I wouldn't, because there's a, a, a charge involved in that, and usually the audio works absolutely fine through here. It's a sort of emergency fallback, basically. You can report a problem to Google, you can report abuse to Google, there is some troubleshooting and help, and then we're another route to get back to those settings that we've looked at. The, the settings can be got at from various different ways through host control and settings as well. And then I've got, finally, the hang up button, which would leave me allow me to leave the call. Um, if I wished so that's you know a uh, feature there then I've got a few more f items over here so I've got meeting details so this allows me to find the meeting link and I could then share this link with an external visitor say for example someone from the the clergy who visits our school regularly can come and talk to us or a visitor from uh, a museum or some other uh, visitor could be given that link and they could join as an external visitor also, if I attach any attachments, they appear here. The people toggle we've already looked at. That's where we can mute all, and we can go through some of the host options, and we can add people manually. The chat bar we've already looked at as well, and we can toggle that on and off for normal pupils. 
And then I've got some extra activities. So I've got recording, which again, as I say, is something that's going to become a premium feature in the new year and will be, a visit, will be vanishing from here. Um, but I've also got whiteboarding, which I've mentioned earlier when I talked about a jam board, whiteboard here, open a jam. And we'll look at that in a few seconds. And last but by no means least, I've got yet another way to get to my host controls, which, carry, which has all the host controls and the ability to get to the settings again, basically, as well. So multiple ways of getting back to those host controls. So we mentioned Jamboard briefly in passing. So um, I can create a whiteboard from here or from the tools little bar here and say I want a whiteboard. And I can start a brand new blank one or I could have a pre-prepared one, a bit like you might prepare your smart notebooks or your PowerPoint presentations to use in class. You can do that now using Jamboard and you can have that ready prepared. So I'm just going to start a brand new blank one for now. And basically, I'm the teacher. I've got the ability to do this. It will start the jam for me. It knows these people already have access to this classroom because they're in here with it at the moment with me. And I would share, but give them the ability to either view it, if it was just literally me showing them what was happening and I don't want them to mess around and change things. But if this is going to be a collaborative workspace where I'm hoping they may get involved, then giving them the ability to edit means that suddenly I've got instant access for that. So I'm going to go uh, edit rights and send that and it will create the Jamboard. Um, and it will create the Jamboard and it will also send a link to the Jamboard straight into chat. So if I now close this tab here and go back into chat, you'll see I shared a jam file with the meeting and it has appeared as if by magic just there. So here's my jam board. I'm just going to expand it out a bit so that it fills the uh, screen. There we are. And this is what the jam board looks like. Um, now to Albert. He's got the link to the jam board. He can click on the link to the jam board just like we clicked on links before to get to web pages. And Albert's now straight into the jam as well. And he can see that I'm in there with him. Um, and obviously all the other pupils who've got access can also access this jam board. And as they all join the jam, their initials will appear at the top here. So we've now got lots of people in the jam. And now this is set up as a collaborative one. We've all got the ability to edit. So as teacher Nick, I might put a piece of text up there. So I've got pens, erasers, select tool, sticky notes. Um, I've got uh, ability to add an image. I've got ability to add shapes and I've got the ability to add text. So I might ask a simple question like, uh, that's got a little bit squashed up because of the auto formatting, but there we are. We'll make it nice and big at the top. Um, and that's now appeared immediately, instantaneously for everyone else. So here we are. It was highlighted briefly in green so that the other people you viewing this knew who would type that. Let's teach Nick type that. And now what we can do is I can talk to them, obviously, because we're still on an audio uh, feed. We're, we're just now not looking at each other in Meet. We're looking at the Jamboard instead. Um, and so I can say, right, can you use the sticky note tool? And can you give me your answers? So Albert can click on this and say something like, and that then goes on as a sticky note. Uh, and that sticky note is immediately available to all of us. Um, and any of us can grab it and move it around and rearrange things as we go. And uh, yeah, other people can contribute and they can choose the color of their sticky note. And as these notes appear, they appear with a little tag that tells me who has contributed, which is really quite useful for me as a teacher. So I can, uh, I know that C's looking at that at the moment. And I can make changes, so we can edit these, we can add more to it, change it, uh, if, if things are qu quite correct. We can duplicate, we can delete, we can also pile these up a little bit front and to back to make it a real sticky pile if we really want to do, because obviously this is a new item and it's come to the front. And we could carry on like this. Um, and yes, we could draw pictures. So we could say, OK, let's draw a picture of a plant. So if we draw a picture of a plant's leaf, there we go. Uh, I'm having to do this with my mouse. Not terribly good for making pictures of leaves. Um, and we could talk about, you know, the features, the veins of the leaves and the structures there that are there to hold the leaf in shape and why it's there. And we could, we could do a picture of a chloroplast or, or whatever. Uh, and in fact, we can also bring in images. So we've got an image search. I can upload one from my computer, which would be really useful. I can look by URL. I can use the camera that's built into uh, my device if I've got a camera built into my device. So I can capture something in front of me like a piece of work. 
and we can then pop it up on the screen and we can all look at it together which is quite useful um, I can search Google Images so if I search Google Images for chloroplast there we go um, we could then stick one of these in maybe there are let's try that one and see how that works and that's going to pop it in as an image um, we'll make it a little bit larger and then we can look at a chloroplast and talk about how chloroplasts are, are used for photosynthesis if we wanted to go into that sort of detail and that's again immediately available to Albert and he, uh, he can see what's been added by who and Albert can contribute as well so Albert may go back into images um, and Albert can go to Google Images and we can then look for some information about chlorophyll so maybe we can look at maybe the structure of chlorophyll there we are, we can set that in, it's getting very, very, getting very scientific now. So, you know, th this can be added and can be annotated by anybody, because this is Albert contributing, because I gave him those edit rights. So we can now start working collaboratively, and I get to see you know, who, who it is who's added those things, because it's briefly highlighted and telling me that. So this is a, you know, a brilliant, brilliant feature. Um, when we finished with them, I just say, OK, well, let's, get, let's go back to the meat, shall we? Um, I can go to share and I can just kick all these people back out so I can actually say let's uh, let's just remove yeah, okay I have to do it manually which is a bit of a pain but you know after we've finished I can kick all of the others out um, they get a message telling that the access has expired so as teacher yes um, we're back here um, if I wanted them to better maintain access to this, then there's several ways I can do that. Um, I can share it and actually share. Uh, if I go here, uh, and I can change this so that anyone within my school uh, can be a viewer and go done. Uh, and now that link will now work so that they've all got access to carry on viewing it afterwards, which would be quite handy. Um, and I could even share that link and then via classroom if I wish to so that we can say okay here it is so so let me go share um, I'm just going to copy that link from there just to make sure and if I close the Jamboard and actually go back to Blackbird class then I could say create material Uh, and that means we haven't lost that jam we haven't lost the content so that's Jamboard and, and it can be a really useful tool whether it's just you know demonstrating how to do long division or getting children to demonstrate back because obviously they can pick up a pen tool and they can have a go answering the questions whether it's having a go at spelling writing out some words um, whether it's brainstorming ideas using things like the post-it notes there's there's lots of things you can do with jam even when you're having to be remote and especially of course if it's a hybrid situation because if you can open the jam board and share it with those students sitting in front of you in the classroom then actually those who are at home can 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 carry on being part of the classroom they can carry on contributing they can carry on adding things to it um, and you've got that control to be able to turn off chat um, and other things just to keep things a little bit more organized as and when you need them so at the end of the session we've finished um, and as teacher I can go leave call I have two options at this point if I'm handing over this classroom to another adult because uh, I'm a job share or because there's another adult who's in the classroom who wants to carry on working with a few pupils so uh, say for example my teaching assistant then I could just leave the call having made them a co-host then I'd be able to just leave the call however if I go end the call it will kick everyone out um, instantly you'll see that Albert now it says your host has ended the meeting for everyone um, and there is you know it just takes me back to Google meet or I can get back to the blackbird class here and because the meetings now being closed even though Albert has the join button if Albert clicks on the join button Again, we're back to this waiting for the host to join. Albert can't get in, Albert can't chat to his friends. So you'll notice that actually, yes, that new material, the photosynthesis jam has appeared um, and I can access it from here. I can go to classwork. And so I still have the ability 
to now get back to that lovely bit of work we did together and have a look at it all and i, I know i've got it there as for future reference for me as a, as a pupil you know this is what we did in that lesson uh, and really useful for me to have access to that and if it was multiple slides because obviously the whole thing is a bit like um, a slideshow then i could navigate through the slides and look at the rest of the pages that were there and in fact there's nothing to stop you actually allocating pages pre-preparing a jamboard with pupils names on pages and then saying right find your page you work on your jamboard and then you've got one record of the entire collaborative lesson so that's the probably the simplest and most effective way of using google meet with pupils because of classroom um, google classroom controlling membership to that space and that meet link will stay there now again and 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 on the classwork page until i as teacher go back and manage that and turn off the pupil link but there's no reason to turn it off because as you can see it's all nice and secure and pupils just don't have access to it they get put into a waiting room if they try and access it now the third way of creating a google meet meeting is through meet.google.com and from here it will show you those things that are in your calendar but it will allow you to create um, a secure video conferencing using a code or nickname now a code could be a series of numbers a code could be something like and because this code is specific to your school so long as no one else in your school is using the same code then you have access so let's go let's just make it really obvious and we'll make it year three um, and i as teacher can set that up and i can say we're going to go to meet.google.com and we're going to use phonics year three whichever way you use to communicate so if for example you wish to create a meeting that only certain people can access for example a phonics group rather than putting it in your google classroom where anyone who's a member of your class could drop in there use the two options you can either create a whole special classroom for your phonics group and use that google meet which makes a lot of sense in lots of ways to share those resources with just those pupils because you can have multiple classrooms or you can find another way of communicating with them and saying please go to meet.google.com and type in this phrase to join us Okay, whether that's an email out to parents or whether you're using another platform to communicate with your pupils, that's another possibility. So now, if Albert Pupil gets that message from me and says, okay, you've got to go to meet.google.com, so you can go into meet. And again, it will a uh, slightly different screen. You'll notice that that's the meeting that's been scheduled. Mm, yeah, I'm not doing that again because we know what happens with those because anyone can just jump straight into a meeting and and join it at any time as a student which is a real nuisance yep straight in uh, no problems whatsoever even though there's nobody else in the meeting but this code or phrase is a bit more locked down so uh, okay it's phonics i've got to spell it correctly um it's year three isn't it and albert will try and join that meeting and it says basically yeah the meet code doesn't match a call you can join maybe it was phonics year three maybe that's what it was yeah it's just, it's just not working is it maybe i've got to put the capital letters and the full stops in uh, capital sorry capital letters and the spaces in oh, there we are now let's go join yeah you see it's just not working and we just get this error message continually however once a teacher starts this meeting this now exists it doesn't exist until the meeting is started so here we are teacher nick again is joining the phonics year three and as you'll notice what it's done is it's taken out all the capital letters and all the spaces so it actually doesn't matter how albert or bertha or any of the others decide to join as long as they use the right letters spelt correctly it won't matter whether they put spaces or capitals in at all so here we are albert can hit join and now because the meeting exists because it's being created albert can join the meeting again it's a secure way because albert can't join without a teacher starting it first and we've got all exactly the same features that we had in the other meet uh, and because i'm the teacher i can end the call or i can hand over ownership of the call to somebody else so there we are albert's being kicked out of the call so using meet.google.com 
and putting in a phrase and sharing that phrase with other people within my school means they can get access to it. Once I as teacher have started this up, so let's just create a one called test, there we go. Once I as teacher have started it up, I can add others or I can share that link with others. So we can bring more people in who are external to my school even. So again, you know, if we wanted to have a meeting with parents and some members of staff, I could send them that link now I've started the meeting, but I can't do that until I've started the meeting because that meeting link doesn't exist until I'm in here. The Google Classroom one is persistent. Its meeting link remains the same until I decide to reset it to something totally different. So that link is a persistent link and I can send that link to parents at any time I like as long as I don't reset the link and they'll always better get back into here. So you can use this for parents meetings in exactly the same way. Um, and they would just dem uh, request access. So for example, I was doing parents meetings. Yes, I can do that. The parent gets the option to ask to join, not to join. And it says you'll join the call when someone lets you in because this is an external account. And then as teacher Nick, I get, look, someone wants to join this call. Oh, it's Nick Spellew. I'm outside 123 ICT. So it gives you the Google account name of the person. And I can either say, no, you can't come in. Or I can admit them in and bring them in on the meeting. And again, I've got the ability to mute, unmute, pin. I've got the ability to remove from meeting when I don't want them to be there any longer. Or just to hang up and end the call. So it means I can bring in external people, whether that's visitors to the school, virtual visitors, or whether it is parents for parents meetings, that can all be done via the classroom link really, really easily, um, if I wish to do that. And then if I don't wish that parent to have access to my classroom anymore, to better come and join us in the meet, I just go, after I finish the parents sessions, I go into meet, I go manage meet, and I reset that to get a completely different classroom code. As you can see, my classroom code has now changed. It's nice and secure again. Those parents who had the link won't better get in any longer. So there's an awful lot to meet and a lot of new features and a lot of new ways of managing it. But the most important thing is, unless you want to work with staff members, don't use the calendar to set up a meet. Either use the Google Classroom, which pre-populates automatic access to those people who are members of your classroom, but allows you to bring in outsiders should you wish with a nice fixed link. Or use a phrase in Google Meet at meet.google.com and share that phrase with people within your school. You can still join external people into the Meet, but only once you've opened it yourself as a Meet. That's when you get the link and the code which you can then use. Um, so that's a little bit more restrictive.